Notice, notice, notice. Dear viewers, the emergency manager has decided to hire his PR director's close friends to direct and record Flint City Council meetings for $100 per meeting. I was paid less than $4 a meeting or $1 per hour over the last three years. The newly hired company has no intention of providing public access with the footage they now record for the emergency manager with your tax dollars. They have said that they will post the meetings to the city's website. Only 30% of Flint's connected. The good news is that the Flint City Council has stepped up and determined that theses broadcasts are important enough to, as they say, put their money where their mouth are. Each council person has and will contribute to the broadcasting of these meetings on public access. I commend them for seeing the value of the programming I have provided for years. Notice, notice, notice. Spectacle Productions aka, Paul Herring is no long in charge of recording the city COUNCL meetings we are currently only provided a feed from the master control room and therefore have no control over audio or video. If you like to express your opinion regarding this you can call me at 810-239-2901 or the emergency manager via the mayor's office 810-767-7346 option 6. If you would like to see these meetings continue on Fact 17 and ATT's Uverse consider a monthly contribution of $5. Online spectacleproductions.com or by phone 810-239-2901 Thanks for watching and remember The best way to keep a politician honest is watch them Paul H. Herring Sr. Meeting of the Flint City Council to order a couple of things before I get started this evening. One, I'd like to apologize <clears throat> for our delay. God, I got a horse in my throat tonight. <laughs> um, and I apologize for the delay. And second of all, um, Madam Clerk, Inez Brown, <clears throat> is not here this evening. Her daughter's in the hospital. And so she couldn't be here tonight. And so Janelle and I are going to do double duty and... Uh, try to do Inez's um, job the best we can, and by no means are we going to be able to do as good a job as she does. Um, so with that, <clears throat> um, I'm going to change the order of the agenda around just a little bit. I'd like to do the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'd ask Councilman Neely to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. There's been a request for a special order this evening, and Councilperson Jackie Poplar would like to do the special order, and I ask uh, Councilwoman Poplar to come in for the special order. As Council, Councilwoman Poplar? That's before we do roll call. Uh, yeah, because I want her to have her seat, Councilman Mays. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Good evening.
We look forward to your continued accomplishments, the progress in your boxing career, and in your personal life. Uh, we're going to remember this day for the rest of Flint's history as Anthony Durrell Day in the city of Atlanta. Thank, thank you, thank you, Anthony. Be, before you leave, before you leave, and, and I know you know this this person very well, and he's been a strong supporter of athletes in our community. Norm Bryant, would you stand up, please, just for a minute? Norm, Norm has worked behind the scenes in Flint for as long as I can remember to make sure athletes in our community never go without being recognized in our community. The things that we do here, we greatly appreciate, but the things that Norm and his committee do to make sure that athletes in our community get recognized and remembered forever, Norm, I just wanted to recognize you and thank you for all the work that you do behind the scenes to make sure that athletes in our community never go unrecognized. Thank you very much. If I'm going to um, take just a couple seconds here for um, members of the audience that uh, want to go to the back and, and talk to Anthony before I get the meeting started, and then if you want to leave, you can. You're more than welcome to stay for our council meeting. Um, I'm not saying that so that you'll leave, but this is an opportunity for, for me to get the meeting going without disruption, so if you want to leave, and uh, go in the back and see Anthony, you can. Otherwise, um, we're going to get started in just a couple of seconds. Thank you. I'm sorry? Uh, right now? I'm going to get started right now. That's all. The agenda? Yep. I got it. I got one right here. You got one? Right. Okay. Um, I said, you bring it to everybody. I told, I told uh, Shelby, I 
Right. Hey, um, I'm gonna call this meeting back to order. Um, roll, I want to say, Madam Clerk, roll Janelle. Uh, he's present. 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 Okay, we're going to get um, started with the public hearings. And just a note to my colleagues, um, typically when we have a public hearing, uh, these are ordinances that are um, for second reading and adoption, and we usually adopt them uh, later on at the end of the meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and do the public hearing, but they're not listed in the uh, agenda for adoption at the end of the meeting. And after we go through the agenda and we go through the public hearing, I'll come back at the end and do the um, adoption for the ordinances, okay? I just want everyone to know that they're not on the agenda um, for adoption because we had some issues with our Legistar system, so. Mr. President, I'm present. You what? I I'm present, you. Oh, okay. I All took right. care of you. Um, our first public hearing this evening is an amendment to chapter 31, <clears throat> section 31-20.3. It is an amendment, it is an amended ordinance to amend the code of the city of Flint of ordinances by amending chapter 31, general offenses by amending section 31-20.3, fireworks. Ordinance was amended to add the section permit for use of firework applications, purpose of usage, age and limitation. Is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. Our second public hearing is an amendment to Chapter 12, Business and Occupation General for Fireworks, the ordinance to amend the Code of the City of Flint of Ordinances by amending Chapter 12, Business and Occupations Generally, Article um, Dealing with Fireworks by Deleting Article in its entirety as the sale, display, storage, transportation, and distribution of fireworks are <clears throat> now governed by Public Act 256 of 2012. Is there anyone that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing dealing with fireworks? Is there anyone that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. <clears throat> Our next public hearing is amendment to chapter 12, business and occupation generally, ordinance to amend the code of the city of Flint by amending chapter 12, business and occupation generally by deleting outdoor pay phones in its entirety. <laughs> is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? If you'd like to address the city council on this public hearing dealing with outside pay telephones, um, now's your opportunity to address the City Council, ma'am. And this is an ordinance change dealing with pay telephones that are um, displayed out in the public. I guess which number is it? And I need your name for Dion the record. Dion Freeman. I'm sorry? Dion Freeman. Thank you. Dash Bay. Um, which one is it? This is the ordinance dealing with the change in pay telephones and display of tape pay telephones on public property. Which number? One, four. 
140409. Thank you, Councilman Mays. And since I haven't had a chance to read it, what exactly are you proposing to the public to do? Mr. Attorney, do you want to uh, it's respond to that? Certainly, this amendment is proposed, it's proposed to delete this section uh, because there really are no more or very few pay phones, if any, uh, in the city at this point, especially with uh, the number of cell phones in use. So I was just saying we want to just remove, or the city would take the expense of removing any existing pay phones that are still there? No, we wouldn't remove pay phones. We'd simply remove the ordinance because it's unnecessary. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Mr. Miller? Uh, we need your name for the record, uh, please. Willie, Willie Miller. About the, uh, I didn't know anything about it either. Uh, just the idea that the ordinance would say that there should be phones or there shouldn't be phones. And what's the ordinance about? Sir, the uh, ordinance provides extensive regulation of public pay phones. And historically, when there were a lot of pay phones around, it was necessary. But since there aren't really pay phones around anymore, uh, it's not necessary anymore. So, so the idea is just to reduce this regulation as being unnecessary in our city code. Uh, this was discovered. We were making another amendment and realized that this code section has a duplication in the numbering. Um, and that occurred some years back, but there was a duplication. And, and once that was discovered, it was recommended that this simply be, this section just be deleted as obsolete. So okay. it wouldn't affect, you know, if there are pay phones out there, this wouldn't have any impact. It just means the city isn't going out and regulating them. Okay, so if there were a phone that was damaged, then it wouldn't be replaced or something like that. Is that what we're talking about? I really don't understand what you said about the ordinance, um, okay. that it's no longer used or no longer of use. It just but means the city's not going to regulate. Uh, if there's a pay phone that's damaged, it would be up to the, to the company that provides that phone to fix it. The city, has, the city doesn't provide pay phones. So is this uh, saving money or just, you know, the idea that a normal it's person a, it's, that could... It's a duplication in our code of ordinances, and we're just taking this section out of it. Okay, so, so if there was just someone that needed to, use, to call somebody for help and there was no phone around, I mean, the idea that that's why they were there. You know, everybody don't have cell phones. It's just an idea that I don't see. Typically, Mr. Miller, we don't engage in this kind of dialogue. Oh, I'm but, sorry. But, I, but, I, I, but because you're here, I just... In, I just want you to know we're not taking away the ability for pay phones to be located or to not be located in the city of Flint. So we're not, we're duplicating the enforcement of pay phones and we're taking that section out of the code of the city of Flint. So that's okay. what we're doing. Okay? All right, thank you. Correct, Pete? That's correct. I just want to make sure. Um, you, you, can, you can make your statement, okay? And then we're going to move on. Thank you. Just from the little bit that I've heard, the city of Flint has been responsible for eight pay phones. And everyone may not be able to afford a pay phone. And if there was an emergency situation where cellular phones and technology wasn't available such as that, then the pay phone might still need to be available. And now I don't agree with the city being responsible for you know, all these other companies that set the phones up, we shouldn't have to maintain them yet. Some people may need to use a pay phone. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. Our next public hearing is Ordinance Chapter 12, Business and Occupation License, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Flint by amending Chapter 12, uh, Medical Marijuana Provision Centers. Um, is there anyone that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and I gentlemen. I just need your, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but. Normally the city clerk does this. This is my part now. Um, we need your name for the record yes, and sir. your comments are limited to five minutes, okay? Thank you, sir. I'm sorry? I won't take that long, I promise. No, that's fine. But I just, I just want to let you know. Thank you. Uh, 
My name is Bruce Leach. I am a criminal defense attorney here in Flint, Michigan. And uh, thank you for hearing me, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council. Uh, I'm here today to talk about a very important matter, which is the regulation of medical marijuana businesses within the City of Flint. Uh, the Medical Marijuana Act, as it has been passed in Michigan, um, has provided a lot of benefit to patients and caregivers and people who really need this medicine. Uh, in a lot of situations, you know, in the news, we only see the worst of, the, of people who are being turned into criminals in these situations. Um, yet, Flint now has the opportunity to harness the power of this industry. Uh, I believe uh, I, I've met with Mr. Bade at his office, as well as with Crystal Olmsted at his office, uh, in depth about this matter. And I just had a few concerns uh, as it pertains to the uh, draft of this ordinance. Uh, to begin, Section C2, that the Chief of Police shall conduct a criminal background check of the applicant and uh, the provisioning center shall not be issued to any person who has a felony involving illegal drugs or, or for other reasons identified by the chief of police to protect the health and safety and welfare of the community. As an attorney, that, that's a huge open door uh, for the chief of police to uh, essentially deny someone a, uh, who would normally be entitled to operate a business uh, as, as an opportunity for them to not allow them to uh, obtain a license that they would normally be uh, legally allowed to obtain. Um, the second thing regarding that is that this background check uh, activity is conducted by the state uh, LARA, Licensing Administration uh, and Regulation. Um, they conduct these background checks prior to them ever issuing a patient or caregiver card to these individuals. So the, the, uh, having the local chief of police uh, conduct the same background check is redundant as well as adding additional costs and expense to the city. Um, so I, I don't feel that that is necessary. Um, the uh, second issue that I have with it, um, it pertains to uh, the licensing of employees. I'm yet to uncover a specific business where an employee needs a license to do anything. Uh, the yes. business and the business owner would qualify and, and, and obtain a license. Uh, I don't see the, uh, the point in essentially penalizing an employee uh, the application fee of $150. I mean, we're talking about, you know, not high paid employees, but maybe they're working for $10 an hour. So $150 fee to charge them, uh, I, I don't see the, the purpose in doing that. Um, and I would ask that, that you consider removing that penalty essentially to an employee who is just trying to look at a job. I mean, the, the whole idea of this is to create jobs and increase the, the welfare of the local community, bring revenues into the city and, and, and help the local community. Uh, by penalizing the workers, uh, I don't think that that accomplishes that task. Um, and finally, uh, the, the major concern as a criminal defense attorney and being someone who deals with these cases on the, on the front lines, um, I, I almost exclusively represent medical marijuana patients and caregivers all over the state. And in section uh, G, that every provisioning center shall provide immediate access to the premises where business is conducted or property is stored to any police officer um, causes me great concern. Um, I don't think that these people, just because they choose to operate a business that needs to obtain a license, should be forced to forfeit their civil rights. Uh, and we have a Fourth Amendment privilege against uh, unlawful search and seizure. Uh, and I think that this still should apply in this case. I mean, these people are getting a license to operate a business. If they are approved, they're deemed to be in compliance with that law. Now, barring an investigation uh, by uh, whatever local uh, law enforcement authorities that then could substantiate a search warrant, I think they should still have to go through that process. I think it's a, it's, it opens the door to potential for police abuse. And while we are very fortunate in Flint and in Genesee County to have very good law enforcement, um, this is something that opens the door to less, less scrupulous officers, may I, uh, if I can put it plainly. Um, I, I think that we're in a, we have a very good uh, reputation in the city of Flint and Genesee County for being tolerant to people and their needs for this medicine. Uh, and those are my concerns. Um, that I have uh, regarding the draft of this ordinance. And uh, I know that you're maybe intending on passing this at the end of the meeting today. Uh, however, I, I would request that you maybe take a, uh, some additional time to uh, discuss these matters amongst yourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to address the council on this, uh, Chief? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, James Tolbert, Chief of Police. Uh, with all due respect to counselor, uh, there are other businesses that require certain uh, employees to have licensings. Uh, one, I can tell you right after the fact, would be gas stations where the individuals, because of the uh, chemicals used to suppress fires, they have to have some type of training in suppressing a fire. Also, there are, in reference to his inspection, 
uh, Michigan Liquor Control Commission requires that the person who holds a license must uh, surrender to an inspection to law enforcement at the time to ensure that there's a proper uh, dispensing of liquor. Likewise, with the me medical marijuana, uh, any inspection that would be done by the police department would be ensured that they are, uh, with all respect, to make sure we have, uh, we don't have any uh, unscrupulous uh, dealers. So there, there is a need. I, I assured Counselor that we will not be uh, uh, arbitrarily and uh, capriciously enforcing uh, uh, laws or, or issues, but I do believe that a, a uh, inspection and a requirement for license is warranted in this case. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Good afternoon. My name is A.C. Dumas, and I'm a resident of the city of Flint, and I concur with what the police chief has just said. It's nothing, of course, I'm against uh, the marijuana, period. But since I know that you all going to vote for it and pass it, I think it's nothing wrong with having uh, second opinions. And when I say second opinion, if the state is doing their due diligence, I don't see anything wrong with the city of Flint doing uh, its due diligence. I don't think anything wrong with the uh, city of Flint, uh, police going in and checking and so on and so forth. And, you know, while it's under the guise of uh, uh, medical marijuana, you know, I think it's, it's probably going to be a little far more stretched than that. And that's, that's just my uh, opinion, and it's inundated in certain wards of the city of Flint, you know, and so I do have a problem, uh, you know, uh, in the ward where my mother lives, in the seventh ward. You know, I think they'll have uh, some over there, and I have a problem with it. You know, I have a problem with it, period. And then, you know, when you get lawyers come in, especially defense lawyers, not with a corporate lawyer talking about corporate things, you know, but you get a defense lawyer come in, you know, and tells how he defends these people that use marijuana. I have a, t I have a problem with that. And so, you know, uh, I'm against the ordinance, period. But since you're going to have the ordinance, I guess uh, it only takes five votes, I guess, to, 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 to put the ordinance in. Uh, I think that you should have strict guidelines. And you know, uh, if there are strict guidelines on liquor, you know, uh, the state of Michigan, and I have a problem with this, they can give someone a liquor license and override the will of the uh, city or, or municipality that they're, they want the license. They can override it. They don't even have to come to you all. So if you have the opportunity to, to, to have this in your power, don't relinquish your power. Don't relinquish your power. So I, I agree uh, with the police chief. I don't agree often with him, but I do agree with him uh, on this issue, and I am a resident of the city of Flint. I do live in the third ward of the city of Flint, the largest ward in the city of Flint in population. And I do have a problem with that. My mother and my relatives do stay in uh, council person uh, Galloway's ward, and I'm a defender of her. She's 80 some years old, so I'm gonna defend her. I asked her and she said, we don't need it at all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. My name is Chris Dalmarone. I live in Flint, Michigan. I think what's needed with this uh, ordinance is a, uh, a paradigm shift. Uh, council needs to recognize that medical marijuana, in my opinion at least, is a licensed, legally prescribed drug. People can actually go and buy it now. It's legal. It's a licensed drug. It's like going to a pharmacy and buying codeine. The person that lives next door to you cannot just start selling codeine out of their house. It's illegal. It's against the law. But when it's done through a licensed facility, a pharmacy, it's perfectly legal. And that's what's presented to you tonight on the medical marijuana. It's something that's perfectly legal. Any other use makes it illegal, and that should be strictly enforced. But this is 
a drug that has now become legal here in the state of Michigan. And it needs to be looked at like that. The ordinance addresses 1,000 feet from any school, from any park, from another dispensary. Are we asking that of our pharmacies? Are we asking pharmacies cannot be located within 1,000 feet of each other? I simply say go to McLaren Hospital. They have two pharmacies within that hospital. There's a pharmacy at Walgreen, kitty corner from them. There's Diplomat Pharmacy further down Beecher Road. Another one on the other side of the street, from Di another pharmacy on the other side of the street from Diplomat. Are we charging, as the ordinance asks, $5,000 every year to each of our pharmacies? Who amongst you will knock on Diplomat's door and say, pay us $5,000 every year? Are all your employees licensed? Have they, been pay have they paid their fees? I don't think this is what we want. I'm concerned about the police having the right to enter the property, especially without, not so much without a warrant, though I can see that being problematic, but without some type of notification that there has been an entry there. That not only is the property owner understand, knowing that you know, the, the police have entered the property without a warrant, but someone else should know about that. Because what will happen is then it becomes one person's word against another. The police should be required to notify, I'm not sure who, the city clerk's office, the, the police chief, some entity, some individual saying we were in this property on this day at this particular time. Uh, it, regarding the question of schools, uh, you know, I, I think there's the question of are we talking about Flint City schools only? Are we talking about uh, private schools, charter schools? Are we talking about schools that have been closed? Can a dispensary be located within 1,000 feet of a school building which has been closed quite possibly for years? And we know that's, that's common here within the city. Can a dispensary open within 1,000 feet of a school or church located outside of the city of Flint? So on one side of the street might be the city of Flint. On the other side of the street might be Mount Morris Township, might be Burton, a, Burton in church, a, a church in Burton, a school in Burton. Will that trigger the 1,000 foot distance or are we only talking about schools within the city limits of Flint. I think before this ordinance is passed, it should go back to, let me say, the drawing boards. I think it, the, the, the paradigm shift is that this is a legally dispensable drug. And when you look at it that way, I think you see things in a different light. Because I, certainly, we're not going to go and one day tell pharmacies throughout the city of Flint, it just doesn't work. We're not going to grandfather you in. Somebody needs to close. Somebody needs to move. You all need to start paying $5,000. I don't think we want to do that. And I just don't see, in my eyes, the difference between a pharmacy and a dispensary, which is dispensing a legal drug. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, council men and women, my name is Benjamin Horner. Uh, the last time I was in front of you was about four years ago when I uh, let you guys know that I was interested in, in opening up a medical marijuana dispensary clinic. Uh, and for the last four years, we've had no problems. We've been audited by the IRS. Uh, we've gainfully employed uh, uh, up to a dozen employees at a particular time. And if Inez Brown was here, she could let you know that we're all paying our taxes. And um, I, I was a little concerned with some of the other comments that I've, I've, I've heard up here. I've been in Lansing working on the Bill 4271 and 5104, and not everyone can get what they want out of uh, you know, legislation, especially on this particular issue. As a dispensary owner, I would not have any problem with the uh, chief of police coming in and doing an inspection. Matter of fact, many other medical marijuana states have that kind of provision. I think that's important. 
Uh, it's just like the health department coming into a uh, food and beverage establishment. You want to make sure that these uh, regulatory officials have the uh, opportunity to, to, you know, review problems and uh, have them resolved. Uh, in regards to the zoning issues, in regards to the schooling and whatnot, I know that issue's been hashed out at length. I'm very happy and satisfied with the work that's been done on that. Um, uh, and matter of fact, I can't see anything wrong with the ordinance as it exists now. I think it's uh, absolutely fantastic. And I don't think we need to make the regulations any more laxed. Because if we make them more laxed or we postpone putting this off, then uh, that can only make negative situations happen and I've, I've, I've seen a lot happen with medical marijuana and um, it's not always positive. I'll be honest with you. I've seen some, some bad situations happen with medical marijuana. After we opened up the dispensary, we started a publication and we've been around the state and we've reviewed several. Uh, I've seen most of the places in the, in the state of Michigan and I think a $5,000 fee will help keep some of the riffraff out. I think uh, having uh, inspections is going to be very important to keep people uh, in their legal limits. If they have to wait, you know, a couple days before the inspector comes in, it gives them chances to to, to uh, cover up things that are not necessarily good. And I want everyone in the medical marijuana industry to be uh, safe uh, and legal. And uh, I would encourage you to pass this ordinance as soon as humanly possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Dion Freeman, Dash Bay. <clears throat> Just reading what I can see here, and so everybody understand, I guess provisioning centers is being used as, instead of dispensaries, correct? And <clears throat> the city of Flint already has enough problems that it is with murder, rape, burglary, and all those things. And not anything against the city of Flint police, I appreciate their service to the community. Right now, with us still being under emergency management control, the state has already, according to Lara, issued what the state wants, and the people of the city of Flint have agreed with that. Um, changing the ordinances that have been presented, I think is causing another, sit uh, another situation where we're gonna have um, some type of dual regulations. Um, I'm sure in the city, in every neighborhood, everybody knows where the drug problems are. They know where the drug houses are, not the ones that are trying to abide by the laws according to the state and what the people agreed to, what we wanted to do. Um, it's coming to dual policing again. And then, um, I guess, in, I don't know what section, I've got a short amount of time. About 25% of cultivated marijuana. What is the definition of cultivate or cultivated marijuana? Are you talking about seeds? Are you talking about the whole process of growing? Are you talking about what? What does the word cultivate according to what we want to do in the ordinance? What would that actually mean? And then it says if there are three or more individuals using one facility, how can you regulate? Um, is it going to be one building and 75% of the use? Each person gets 25% of the building to use. I think it needs more clarification on that if this is to go through. Something in Part C, again, I guess that's the question of the provisioning center. Um, two, as I already mentioned, the chief has enough and the city of Flint police has enough to do with just policing the city and trying to take care of its citizens on a normal everyday basis without trying to step into the areas of the state. <clears throat> also, if there is a problem, I already mentioned that too, about there being a problem and being sure that the people in the neighborhoods where they live, they already know what's going on and I'm sure it's being reported to the police. Um, there's something in here on number six about a non-refundable fee to submit an application for a provisioning center license, okay? If it's submitted to the city and it's rejected, then give it back. If you determine that that person or their situation or their whatever is not feasible to what the city says or dictates, then give them their money back. Um, and as the police chief mentioned, a, a license to work at a gas station, if every employee goes through hazardous waste or fire extinguishing programs to understand how to do that inside of a gas station, 
I'm sure the employee who employed them paid for them to go through that training. It wasn't put upon the individual employee to have to do that. Just like if you work for the Red Cross the first aid, you come, you get hired, you go through the training that's required by whomever to be inside of a gas station and work. So I don't know, and I haven't studied the laws out on medical marijuana use, but I'm sure this attorney has. And um, as a citizen of the city of Flint, I don't agree with what's being presented. Um, there are things that still need to be clarified. And um, we're all struggling around here still. So to try to make an employee pay $150, and like the gentleman said, he may have somebody working for $10 an hour. Well, if they're going to be an employee, and if you all want to put this through, then let the person who hired them pay the cost, not the person being hired. Um, and then as far as search warrants being issued, the police have to do their job on every level, and they're doing them. But again, still be in the same situation of dual police with the state policing us, the city policing us, the sheriff policing us. We get help from other entities, but the people who live on an everyday basis, who do what they're asked to do, and want to help the city prosper and grow. We're the ones that are standing here saying, hey, we don't mind working with the city, but don't change the ordinance into something that's ambiguous that we're going to have to try to work out later on and cause another problem for our future. So I say, leave it alone. We don't have anything on the books about it until it's really clear. Either go by what the state goes by and don't create something new other than I would say that was nice about provisioning center instead of calling it a dispensary. But other than that, um, you're, you're, I just don't agree. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Need um, your name for the record, please. Jordan Cummings. Thank you. Uh, I would urge the city council to go back to the drawing board with the with everything that you guys have basically put down in writing. It's a slippery slope, I believe, sliding down, letting a police chief or, or anybody have a double standard basically for any medical marijuana patient or any, any business. I would, I would say if we're going to do that, we should have the police chief check anybody opening up a pharmacy, anyone opening up in this, any type of establishment you know, to deal with things that are considered uh, obscure. I just think that this council needs to go back Almost everything in there, I'm a Marine veteran, fought for this country, and nothing I believe in my heart and soul it is right in, this, in any of this, uh, this hearing, or this proposal, rather. I mean, you're taking HIPAA laws away from people, you're slipping down a slippery slope with a police chief that can, you know, decide who and who doesn't get the, the option to open up a dispensary or a provisioning center or anything. People voted it in. Um, there, is, there is power in the people in this city, and I, I believe that you guys can make this a lot better than what it is. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Good evening, Council. My name is Paul Herring, and uh, I, too, am against the medical marijuana ordinance as it stands. Um, a little lesson for you new council people, uh, a reminder for you old ones. I think it was about six years ago, a gentleman wanted to open up a needle exchange here in the city of Flint. And he was told that the rules were he had to be a thousand feet away from a school, a church, and a park. He did the research, and he found that the only place that qualified was under the bridge on Pearson Road. All right, so when you're limiting these, um, the space, it's, 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 one, it's ridiculous. You wouldn't do it with a pharmacy. You really got to replace pharmacy with dispensary when you're writing this ordinance. And if you're not willing to do it to a pharmacy, you shouldn't be willing to do it to a dispensary. It's legal, guys. It is legal for those people who need it, to possess it, to have it, to use it. Not unlike the codeine, not unlike the Xanax and all the other drugs that people use on a regular basis. 
It's legal. And you guys have got you to get a grip around that. And it's a moneymaker, apparently. At $5,000 a WAP, you guys see the benefit. But maybe instead of $5,000 a WAP, you put a little service charge on each uh, uh, transaction or something. I don't know how you guys can do that, but I think $5,000, like Ben said, will keep out the riffraff, which may be a good thing. Um, so I'm torn on, on the five grand, but the, the thousand feet issue is really, is really a big one. You're going to limit where they can, can be. I mean, you already have zoning laws that allow people to open businesses in certain areas and certain places. And if those aren't sufficient, maybe those should be tweaked. But again, I want to encourage you when you're looking at this, the word dispensary and pharmacy should be interchangeable. And if you're not willing to do it to one, you shouldn't be willing to do it to the other. Hello, my name is Nicholas Panacidi. I'm the owner of Michigan Safe Transfer. Uh, I was the second dispensary uh, here in Flint. Um, that was, I think like Ben said, a little, a little over four years ago. So um, I'm very active in the legislation in Lansing. I know that no law, no ordinance is ever perfect. And you know, it's, it's really easy for people to sit and say that, you know, all the work that's been done really doesn't mean much. Mean much. Um, I've been in limbo for four years. And like I said, I know no legislation, there's no ordinance, nothing is perfect. But we can work with this. Um, a lot of the things that were mentioned, I, I also don't agree with. But like I said, um, it's something we can work with. I urge you to pass this. There's a lot of smart people on this council here. And if there is a problem, I'm sure we can amend something to make it work. I have confidence. That's why we come here to Flint. Ben and I both sought out Flint because of uh, the openness, the accepted. Uh, and we knew that it was accepted here. And uh, we know there's a lot of smart people here. And we, we hope that uh, this can move forward. Um, we've always been in support. If there's anything we can do, we'd be happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. My name is Cassandra Krauss. I'm uh, one of the members of the Michigan Compassion Center. I'm a resident and property owner here in Flint. I am, of course, uh, positively want you to pass this. I would um, encourage the ordinances and zoning of medical marijuana. There's a lot of misconstruing of the law. A lot of people are not in understanding of the ordinance that you're passing nor of the Michigan medical marijuana law. A lot of the things that people mentioned don't have to be clarified by your ordinance because they're already clarified by the medical marijuana law and, and what you're trying to pass today. It says that in order to be licensed, we have to follow that law. So um, people that are involved need to educate themselves on that law like Ben and Nick have. They've been, um, I've, the Michigan Compassion Center has been open since 2010 like these two, and um, the people that have been open and running openly and trying to follow the laws and trying to understand the laws, I think all of us are positively want some clarification from our local ordinances to help us be seen as a valid, you know, not some drug dealers on the corner, but someone who is validly trying to do good for their community, not trying to bring down their neighborhoods. Um, I'd like to ask you please to clarify the fact that um, I don't think that people understand that in your ordinance um, dispensary and that 25% of any business, that pertains not just to me, Nick, and the, and the people who are listed in the ordinance, but it, it refers to all caregivers who live and, and cultivate marijuana in the city of Flint and who may have a household in a residential area that's filled with marijuana, um, that this is what this is about. Those people have to come out of the woodwork and report who they are, get properly licensed and properly inspected. Um, it, am I correct in that assumption, um, that that's what it is that you're clarifying that this is about? This isn't just about the storefront 
dispensary, but it's about these grow operations all over Flint. And that if you're a caregiver that, and you're growing and filling up a household in Flint, you have to get a dispensary license. Correct? That is correct. Okay. And that my other question is this, and it's kind of personal to my business and what I do with my business. Um, in the section 501 and in section 500, they kind of, it seems to me, they contradict each other a bit in the 1,000 and 2,000 or 2,000 feet um, ordinance. If then it says in the other that you can have up to 15 caregivers within one facility. If each caregiver is a licensed facility, a licensed, um, you know, dispensary, which reflects as the law is written, then I can't have more than four people in my building to keep less than 